Guys, today for our read aloud, we're going to read one of Scarlett's favorite books. It's called The Art of Miss Chu, and it's by Patricia Polacco, who's a super famous author, and she wrote one of our class favorite books, which is My Rotten Redheaded Older Brother. So we know um, a little bit about Patricia Polacco and that she writes books that are um, about her own childhood, and this is just like that. Okay. The Art of Miss Chu. I discovered how much I loved art the summer I spent with my grandmother and father in Michigan. Grandma was an artist. She drew and painted so beautifully. Grandma even told me that I was a natural artist, so I couldn't wait to take art at school next fall when I got home to California. I only had one problem left, tests. I just couldn't seem to pass them. And that's the little introduction. So then we go to The Art of Miss Chu. I was back in California and I loved school. Hard to believe because once I had a lot of trouble reading, but not anymore. And I really liked my new teacher, Mr. Donovan. He was from Ireland and had sky blue eyes, a laugh that sounded like bells ringing, and a great Irish accent. He loved telling stories about his family back home, especially about his father. Seemed like he always had a smile on his face. But he didn't have a smile the day he handed back my first social studies test. I could feel my face get real hot when I unfolded it. An F again. The trouble was everyone read faster than me. Even though I knew the subject real well, I'd run out of time before I was finished. I started having stomach aches when I knew a weekly test was coming up. Mr. Donovan finally sat me down. You know the subject, Trisha. What you need is extra time. He started giving me the time I needed, and sure enough, I began passing tests. But that didn't help my other problem. There was no real art class in my new school, just art on a cart for 30 minutes once a week. Then one day, Mr. Donovan saw one of my drawings. He picked it up and hung it on the bulletin board. Patricia, you have remarkable talent. All of the kids in, in class crowded up to look at the picture. Man, oh man, can you draw, Davy Mulford remarked. Wow, Rick Shubb agreed. Even Neon Price, who never spoke to me because she was so popular, was impressed. I felt so proud. It wasn't a day later when Mr. Donovan told me about Miss Chu, head of the high school art department. She has a special program for young artists on Tuesdays and Thursdays. When I showed her your drawing, she said she wanted you in her special class. Now, what would you be thinking of that, Miss Trish? I love drawing. Sometimes when I was drawing, I'd forget to breathe. I danced on air all the way home that day. I couldn't wait to tell my mother. The first Tuesday, I'd never walked so fast in my life as I did to get to Miss Chu's class on time. I had never seen a room like hers, windows that went from ceiling to floor, giant easels at one end, rows of drying racks at the other, and paint everywhere. I didn't know anybody. Then Miss Chu breezed into the room. Her smock was so covered in paint, it was a painting in itself. She was tall and slender, and she spoke with a Chinese accent. We have a new student today, she said, motioning toward me with her beautiful long fingers. Her name is Teresa Barber. Teresa? No, I wanted to shout my name is Patricia. But Miss Chu had already spun around and was passing out sketchbooks. From that day on, I was Teresa. I could barely understand Miss Chu's accent. In this class, we are going to learn to speak another language. She touched her heart, the language of art. Art, a language? But Miss Chu went on. It isn't spoken. It is the language of emotion and images. But first, she told us, you need to learn to see. See. She plopped down two salt shakers in the middle of the table. Open your sketchbooks, take up your pencils. Now draw the shakers. But first, young friends, see them. Don't just look at them, see them. Yeah. That kind of looks like the older brother, but not the hair. See how the light dances through the glass and makes a shadow pattern on the table? Yes, I saw it. Draw yeah. it, said Miss Chu. See how you can make your pencil line darker and lighter? She changed the line from dark to light. Yes, I saw that too. Yes, Teresa, Miss Chu said, you have it. Now do your drawings again. 
Move the shakers off center. Let them run off the page on purpose. Make them bigger. Get the dancing light as it makes its shadow. She sang as she moved from table to table. She made us draw those shakers six times in six different ways. At the end of the day, she said, take your sketchbooks everywhere with you. First see, and then draw. draw. That looks like your older brother, but mm -hmm. without the glasses. I couldn't wait. I took my sketchbook everywhere with me. On the bus home, I drew people sitting in their seats, even the bus driver. When I got home, I drew apples in a bowl and my cat, Tilly. After dinner, I made my mom and my brother, Richie, sit so I could draw them. Ain't you got no homework, my brother groaned. This is homework, I said. Sit a little longer. I almost have you. The next day, after I had finished my assignment, I asked Mr. Donovan if I could make a drawing of his dad, his father, from the photo on his desk. I tried to remember everything Miss Chu told me. The next part is dad. The next art class, Miss Chu called me up to her desk. Everyone had handed in one or two sketches. I had done over 20. Your drawings are very good. Her eyes smiled as if we had a secret. The cat, the apples, your mother and brother, you've captured every detail. I particularly like your use of negative space. Negative space? See this drawing, Teresa? What do you see? She held up a picture. Two people looking at each other. Anyone could see that. So the way Teresa's looking at it, I mean, Patricia. Ah, why can't I get it the right place? She sees two people looking at, each other. looking at each other. But that's actually the okay, negative space. Okay, hold on, Sparla. Now, Teresa, instead of looking at the two faces, look at what is between them. Nothing. Wait, uh, uh, a lamp. Or a tall stemmed cup. First you read negative space. Now you are reading the actual object. What an idea. I started looking at all of my own pictures for negative space. Okay, so see how if you look at it from the outside, it looks like two faces. But if you look at it from the inside, it's like a cup. I was so happy. But a few weeks later, Mr. Donovan was called to the office. When he came back, his eyes were red. He couldn't seem to talk. He just stared out of the window. Finally, he spoke. Me dad died today, he whispered. Our whole class got out of our seats and tried to comfort him. He left for Ireland the next day. That is when we got Mrs. Spaulding, a substitute. She never smiled. Worst of all, when I was taking my weekly test, she came up behind me and ripped the paper out from under my pencil. Time's up, she barked. But Mrs. Spaulding, I'm not finished. Mr. Donovan always lets me have extra time because I'm not Mr. Donovan. And when I say you are finished, you are finished. Of course, I failed the test. That's when she got just plain mean. Your time would be better spent studying for your tests instead of leaving this school to take art classes. She hissed, and I'm going to see if I can make that happen. I tried to be brave and to not tell Miss Chu, but in class I began to cry and blurted out the threat that Mrs. Spaulding had made. Miss Chu began to shake her head slowly. Teresa, she said, you say you can't read fast enough to finish your tests? I nodded. I watch you draw and you begin by drawing a draw and you begin a drawing by drawing what is in negative space. I remembered the picture of the two girls facing the glass. When you see a word, I think you don't see letters at all at first. I think you see the space around them, the pattern they make. No wonder your reading takes you so much time, Miss Chu said. I smiled, but I still wasn't quite sure what she meant. I know someone I think can help, a reading specialist. No one is taking you from this class. I sprang to my feet and hugged her. And tomorrow, Teresa, I am assigning you an easel. You are not only ready for painting, maybe you can be part of the high school spring art show. Whoa. High school is nice. The following day, Mrs. Spaulding announced we would take a timed citywide test that would determine what classes we would take next year. We'd have 45 minutes to finish. I only finished half the test. I knew my art class was over. But when I told Miss Chu, she said, we'll just see about that. With my mom's permission, she would take me herself to see her friend, the reading specialist. After class, Miss Chu took me to her car, a convertible. As we drove off, the car sounded like it was growling, and I was growling, and I loved it when we drove by my school and Mrs. Spaulding actually saw us. Dr. McClare played what seemed like a hundred reading games with me, but I wasn't afraid. I knew he was trying to help. 
When he finally called Miss Chu in, he said, you are spot on, Miss Chu. She reads patterns, not words. This takes time. Miss Chu wanted a meeting of all the players. Everyone came, the principal, Mrs. Spaulding, Miss Chu, Dr. McClare, and my mother. Mrs. Spaulding said the extra art class was simply a distraction. Trisha is drawing instead of studying. Miss Chu said, but she needs extra time to finish tests, all tests. When she and Dr. McClare said that I see things differently than most students, Mrs. Spaulding scoffed as if to say, what could an art teacher know about how a child learns? I don't tell you how to teach a child to draw. It was as if she didn't think art teachers were real teachers, that maybe art wasn't even a real class. Mr. Donovan came back exactly two days later. I couldn't help myself. I ran to him and hugged him. I am so glad you are back, I said. When someone else told him what Mrs. Spaulding was trying to do, he got really red in the face. And I don't know exactly what happened after that day, but it seemed that Mrs. Spaulding was no longer needed as a substitute, not in the whole school. So I went on to Miss Chu's class every Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, as soon as Mr. Donovan gave me extra time when I took my tests, I passed them with flying colors. I decided to use the sketch of Mr. Donovan's father for my first painting. When Miss Chu saw it, she just stood there and looked at it. Teresa, this sketch is so full of emotion and love. You have most certainly learned the language of art. Mr. Donovan will be so moved. When I finished the painting, she said, Teresa, this painting is going to be part of the art show. You will be the only exhibiting artist who isn't a high school student. I couldn't believe it. Me, me in the spring art show. Later that day, Miss Chu asked me to stay after class. She handed me a package wrapped in bright red tissue paper and said softly, we Chinese believe that red brings luck. And Teresa, remember this ancient Chinese proverb, yesterday is history, tomorrow a mystery, today a gift. That is why it is called the present. She smiled. When I opened the gift, I caught my breath. It was one of Miss Chu's painting smocks for me. I wanted to cry. When I looked in her eyes, she had tears too. Only a week later, I wore my new smock to the art show. Here's the art show. Wait, what's it? Yesterday, history, tomorrow, mystery. Light was dancing off the mirrored chandeliers. Our paintings were everywhere. I was so proud. Then I saw Mr. Donovan standing in front of my painting of his father. He couldn't speak. He took my hand and squeezed it. Miss Chu came up to us. She looked so radiant. It's beautiful, isn't it? She whispered to him. I looked at the two of them. Miss Chu was right. This moment was a present. It turned out to be the defining moment in my young life. I was set on a course to be an artist. It could be no other way. Thanks to the art of the amazing Miss Chu. Is it and at the end, there's a little note. It says, dear reader, if I could have, I would have addressed this letter to Miss Chu, but since she is no longer here, I want you to understand the deep and abiding feelings I will always hold for her. Violet Chu not only taught me how to see, but how to perceive, evaluate, and appreciate the beauty of art. The tragedy is that today, too often, money aren't, is no longer available in many public schools to support art, music, drama, or descriptive arts programs. How could this be? Art teaches us to speak a language that originates in the heart, the soul, and earliest memories. How could any course be more important? Miss Chu went on to become my art teacher at Oakland Technical High School during the 1960s. It is solely because of her that I managed to earn a scholarship to California College of the Arts. And in all the years that Miss Chu was in my life, she never called me by my given name. I am and always shall be her Teresa. So Miss Chu, I'm thanking you for your remarkable art, your ever feeling heart, and your belief in young people. Sincerely, Patricia Polacco. So today I want you guys to think about something that's been hard for you. It could be anything. It could be riding a bike. It could be reading. It could be drawing dancing. It could be drawing a picture. It could be a, doing a cartwheel. Think about what has been hard for you at some point and how did you finally make it happen? Did someone help you? Did something help you? What changed that made something hard become something you could do?